I spent about 17 years incarcerated in the state of California. In that time, I met some really stupid people. That shouldn't be surprising. You figure that your average inmate has an IQ around 90 or so, and that's because you go to prison for doing stupid things, being a stupid person. But of the tens of thousands of people that I met while incarcerated, there's one guy who stands out as the dumbest man I met in my entire life. Prid. I met Prid while I was incarcerated at the Mendocino County Jail. I was just starting out my term. It was a small pod that I lived in. There was only about a dozen other inmates that I'd interact with on a given day. So when they moved in a new guy, it was uh, exciting. You'd go meet the new guy. The fact that he had tattoos didn't really stand out. A lot of inmates have tattoos. Even that they were racist tattoos is not unusual. But these were some messed up tattoos. I, I don't mean they were messed up like they were poorly done. They looked very well done, professional. I mean, they were messed up like he had Hail Hitler there on his neck. H-A-I-L, Hitler, like frozen rain, Hitler. Up here, he had a pair of swastikas that were backwards. And on this side, he had uh, the lightning bolts, SS, except they were little sixes. He had a ten-legged spider here on his hand. And the piece de resistance, the thing that stood out, was... Big block letters, white, P-R-I-D, prid, that are on his arms. That's why I called him prid. I tried to give him the benefit of the doubt. I asked, hey, excuse me, man, what's up with your tattoos? And he spouted off a bunch of racist gibberish. I went, no, no, I, I understand, racist gibberish. But why did you spell P-R-I-D? And he, he again, he went, Pride! White pride! Went, no, but why did you spell it? P-R-I-D. And I, I'm thinking that maybe he's going to say something like uh, he and his brother got matching tattoos so they're a little different than everybody else's so they could stand out. Or maybe, uh, I don't use the letter E, that's a Jewish letter. I know that sounds absurd. You would not believe the absurd and foolish things that I have heard racists say to justify racism. No, no, what he says is, we didn't know how to spell pride. You didn't know how to spell the word pride in white pride? What in God's name are you proud of? But I ask him, I go, well, then why don't you put an E there on your hand to spell it right? Your response, well, it wouldn't be even then. Oh, God. Prid. And that's all I'll ever call him. I'm sure he had a name, but you earn the name Prid whenever you spell a tattoo like that. He was dumb as a brick. There was an occasion where I, I told him, I said, Hey, Prid, I, I like to be a little generous with the other guys in the pod because uh, you said you were living under a bridge, you were homeless, and I, I know a couple of the other guys are pretty hard up too, and I, I have a couple of bucks here and there, so when I go to canteen, can I get you anything? Maybe a candy bar or a couple of coffee packs? He got excited. He goes, yeah, give me a couple of sweet and lows. I want some sweet and lows. They have those, right? Sure thing. No, no problem, Prid. Sweet and lows, like five cents on a canteen. I'll get you a ten pack. And I, I do. I come back from the canteen that day with a little ten pack of sweet and lows, and he snatches it out of my hand. He's excited. Oh. He runs into the next room, and I watch him open it up, pour about three sweet and lows out on the table, grab his ID, and make a nice, neat little line, and... He snorts up three sweet and lows like they were drugs. I I'm going in there to ask him what in God's name is wrong with him. And he turns to me and goes, hey, do you want one? No. No, I don't want to snort a sweet and low. Why are you snorting sweet and lows, Pred? So they get you high. They get you hella high. No, they don't. Look, maybe they cause some brain damage. And that feels like you're getting high, but it's not the same thing. I, I feel like I'm picking on Pritt a little bit, but it, it's important that I really drive in how stupid this guy was. How oblivious to reality he was. There was a day 
where because I, I'd been there longer than the other inmates, I, I had a lot of things that other inmates didn't. I, I'd been there for almost six months at this point. I was uh, fighting my court case, and it was, it was kind of high profile. It drug out for a lot longer than most guys' court cases did. As a result, I had some things like Ben Gay, which is, you know, the cream you rub on your hands if they hurt. I had carpal tunnel. Whenever I was younger, I'd program computers and, you know, type 14 hours a day, so my, I had bad carpal tunnel. Whenever the other inmates would smoke, it would stink up the pod, and they'd ask me, Hey, Aaron, can you put on some Ben Gay and walk around the pod doing this so that it will diffuse the smell a little bit? I didn't mind. I wasn't a smoker myself, but it was in everybody's best interest that the pod not smell like cigarette smoke and the cops get upset. One day, I'm walking up and down the hall doing this, and Prid starts walking backwards in front of me. He goes, hey, let me get a sweet and low from you. I know what's coming. I, I see where this is going, but I, I have to follow the conversation through. So I look him right in the eyes, and I'm looking for the tiniest hint of deception, that maybe he's just screwing with me, playing up a part. I go, Prid, why do you want a sweet and low? He says, because it'll help. The problem is that it smells like cigarette smoke in here, Prid. How will my giving you a sweet and low help that problem? The smell will go away when I snort it. Either he was the best actor that I've ever met, or he was a dead serious, and really believed that whenever he snorted drugs, smells went away for other people because he couldn't smell them anymore. One day, after Pritt had been there for about two weeks, he got a check from a lawyer for $1,500. I asked him, I went, hey, Pritt, you have a check for $1,500? He said, yeah, my check came. Prid, you said you were living under a bridge, that you had no money. How do you have $1,500? My check came. Asking him questions was always a bit of a uh, tedious exercise because he didn't know how to provide information that you didn't really draw out of him. But over the course of about 10 minutes of interrogation, it, it became clear that he was a trust fund baby that he got a $1,500 check around the first of every month and had since he turned 18. So the follow-up question was, of course, hey, Prid, why are you so poor? If you get $1,500 a month, where does it go? This is whenever I really came to understand what had happened to Prid. Every month, he'd get a check for $1,500. And he'd go to the local neo-Nazis, the, the jack-booted skinheads that lived somewhere in a clubhouse around. He'd give him his check. They'd bring him in, call him brother and white man, and smack him on the back. And they'd keep him high for about two days, give him a fucked up tattoo to demonstrate the contempt that they had for him. And then they'd kick him out the back door, say, hey, that was $1,500 worth of drugs. Get out. They didn't like him. They liked his money. And then he'd spend a couple of weeks living under a bridge, snorting sweet and low or pebbles or whatever the hell it was he did to get high whenever he didn't have money. And after long enough of doing this, he ended up getting in trouble with the law. I believe he said that he had a couple of dirty syringes and some drugs that he'd scrounged up somewhere. And he went to jail. But why am I telling this story? I mean, I, I don't just want to make fun of uh, somebody who's frankly, a pretty sad and pathetic story. I mean, this guy was so brain damaged, he couldn't function as a normal human. The reason that he ended up in the situation he did is because he believed that the guys that he partied with, the guys that he had fun with, were his friends. If you have somebody in your life that doesn't lift you up, that you just have fun with, that's not a friend. That's not someone who loves or cares for you. You can tell somebody's a friend because they pick you up, and you pick them up. You make lives better. Otherwise, if your friends are just people who drag you down and make your life worse, you end up like Prid. Maybe you don't go to jail or prison or so brain damaged you think that snorting sweet and low makes smells go away, but still your life gets worse because of these people. So look at your life. Lift your friends 
up. And people who don't lift you up don't believe they are your friends because they're not. If you do that, you won't go to jail. You won't go to prison. And you won't have to live a life like Prid. 